Hey there, and welcome to Intro to Keyframing for my uh, ComTech class at Barhead Composite School. And uh, we're going to uh, jump right in. So first of all, I want you to make sure that you have watched the example. And uh, then we're going to get the footage that we have right here. So you click on this, you go to the Keyframing uh, folder and I want you to hold down the control key click on here and pick download when you do that that is going to show up in your downloads folder so that would be right here awesome okay so while that's downloading for you I want you to open up your a new window that's command N it gives you a new window and that's what I've got right here Next, I want you to go to your Google Drive, okay, which is also called your My Drive. And uh, then you're going to find wherever you've placed your video folder. It might be in a ComTech folder. It might be just right here called Video. You've got Video 1-2 and Video 1-3 here. We're going to make a new folder here. So hold down the Control key and click in the empty space new folder and call it keyframing all right keyframing good then we're going to make another new folder and we're going to call it media dash keyframing awesome next you're going to drag the new file right here and you're going to put it into your media folder fabulous okay and uh, now you're going to fire up Premiere Pro. All right? And if th it isn't open down here for you, you can always open it up using the Creative Cloud app. That's found up in the top right. Premiere Pro, hit open. Awesome. All right, so you may end up with this window or you may end up with an empty window. So either way, you want new project. That's this guy. Or you can go file new project. Either one, click on it. Then you get taken to a window and you probably it probably looks like this with all the sample media in here. I really hate this new opening for Premiere Pro, but whatever. Uh, when I make my own software, I will uh, fix that. So, first place, let's give this thing a name. We're not very creative. Keyframing. Awesome. Oh, I spelled it wrong, though. Okay. All right. Next, uh, we're going to pick the project location. So, choose location. And we're going to go into your video folder, keyframing. Now, don't pick the media folder. Just pick the white period, uh, spot right here underneath it. And we'll pick choose. That's where your purple project folder is going to go. If you want to call the, new, the first sequence keyframing, you can. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it doesn't, quite honestly. So I just click create, create, awesome. All right, so now you should have this guy right here. Now we're going to put the, the video footage into this spot here. You can either double click here or you can drag it in. I'm gonna double click and go to my drive, video, keyframing, media, and pick the video. Awesome. There it is right there. I'm going to double click on it. And I know that I actually want the whole thing except for at the very end. See how it goes out of focus at the end? I get hit. Boom. I'm going to actually stop it right there. It's gone out of focus. And I'm going to hit O for out. Great. So... There are two ways to make a new sequence. You can control click right here on the words and say make new sequence, or you can actually just drag it down here into this section now. Awesome. All right, so we are now going to save what we've got. File, save. 
and I'm going to show you what we've done. We now have a keyframing project file right here, the purple guy. That's your actual project. Here's your media right here with, uh, uh, with that is the video. Already Adobe has created an auto save file. That's really good in case we crash. Great. All right. So now we are going to zoom in a little bit. Hit the letter. Uh, you either hit the letter Z if you want and you can click on it or you can grab this little dot and go back and forth and zoom in. Now, just to make sure that all our windows look the same, um, you are going to be currently in editing right here. So you can select editing and you, if still the windows aren't the same, you say uh, reset to save layout. Awesome. Okay, so that way all our windows look the same. Okay, next we're going to grab the playhead and we're going to go, there it is, I'm waving a little bit, and there. I've noticed something to my right. So that is where we're going to create our first graphic. So you can go up to graphics and titles up here and say new layer and text or you see where it says command T you can also just go command T awesome all right so now it's made a new text layer in the middle right here now if I double click on the text layer it's going to open up a new window on the right hand side double click maybe not okay Oh, this is fun. I do like the new version. That was sarcasm. Okay, so uh, I double click down here and this thing opened. Okay, all right. I guess I'm wrong. So you double click on the actual thing, uh, the, uh, the, the graphic in the timeline. Now, why did I want this? Well, I wanted this because I'm going to ch change some of the things. I'm going to grab this, pull this over here and click in there. I'm going to triple click to highlight this whole guy and I'm going to type the word motion. Awesome. Okay, then I'm going to, you'll notice I immediately went to the text tool when I triple clicked on it. So, um, and uh, by the way, that's another way that you can add in text. Let me just click here in the timeline. I'll put the, the mouse right here. If, you, if you're in the text tool, you can even just go up here and you highlight it and say, text, yay. So, I mean, it's, it's way easier than it used to be. That part I do like. That's nice. Okay, I'm going to undo what I've done. Command Z, Command Z. Awesome. And I'm going to go to the beginning of this guy. Now, in order to get to the beginning... I can hit the up arrow only if this video is selected. So if I make sure that that part's selected, I hit the up arrow and see how it goes to that, to the beginning right there. If I don't have it selected, it just goes right to the beginning of this movie. So I'll select that and hit the down arrow. Now I'm back. Good. Okay, so now I want to move this. So I want to pick the move tool. And, nope, I don't want to move this. I want instead, I'm going to click on it once, and I'm going to go back here because I forgot. I was, I was talking too much. I want to change some things in here. All right, let's change the stroke. That's this guy down here on the right-hand side. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to click in the white. I'm going to pick red. See what that did right there? It added that nice red around there, makes it easy to see. You can play around with the other things it does. You can add a little shadow to it too. I wouldn't add a background because you don't really need it at the moment, but play around. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. You can change the font and all that stuff. It's all fairly similar. Okay, and so once you've got this looking the way you want, you want this move tool, the selection tool right here. And we're going to grab this guy and we're going to put it off to the off stage right up here where my eye line is. And that's where we're going to start. Okay. 
Now, I want you to go find effects controls or effect controls right there. And because this guy is selected, it automatically picks this layer. Don't work on vector motion. That is a big mistake that a lot of people make because over here, it still seems to show, oh yeah, you've got this guy, but no, that is not what we want. We want this one that says text. Now, we actually don't need this stuff over here on the right-hand side anymore, so you can actually click on the three lines, say close panel, that'll give us some more room to work. Okay, open this up by clicking on this little guy right here and you will see that you've got a whole bunch of stuff close source text and now we come to transform and this is what we actually want to play with today so i'm going to work on positioning now these two guys under position this is your x-axis this is your y-axis so x goes back and forth so if i hover my mouse over top I can click and I can drag. See how it moves? Right here like that. Awesome. And if I hover over top of this and I click and I drag, it goes up and down. Great. A lot of people like to move it uh, around, especially if it's small and it's hard to grab. Then they move it by just hovering here. But the other thing you can do is you can make sure you're in the selection tool. You can grab it and move it around. But that can cause problems, especially if you accidentally grab a side and then you change the size of it and everything like that. Okay, so anyway, we are here. We're in my eye line. And now what I want you to do is I want you to go next to position and I want you to click on, looks like a little stopwatch. That is for creating the keyframes and animating where it's going to be. You'll notice that we now have this little guy right here, this little diamond. That's a keyframe, okay? And it's we have to make sure that we're right at the very beginning. Okay, now we're going to, I'm gonna actually zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna click on this guy, I'm gonna zoom in, so that way I've got, I can see it a lot better. And then I'm gonna move this, and I'm going to keep moving it until uh, my eyes are in the middle, there. Okay, not a flattering pose. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're now going to move the, the word motion right where my eyes are. You see, I was dragging that line right there. Just going to put it there. You can use it by, if it won't move for you, then use these little guys right here so you can move, go back and forth. Okay, now, do you notice how it automatically created a keyframe right here? Okay, so it will automatically make one if you move it. Okay, if you're, if you're at a spot where there's no keyframe. All right, if you go to a spot where there already is a keyframe, then it's going to edit that keyframe. All right, now, do you see this guy? Go to previous keyframe. I'm going to click on it just to show you. Right, see how the playhead moved, and now I'm going to show, look, it, it moves. Awesome, but then it stays. So we're going to keep on going. Now, right at, okay, right, maybe that point right there. So this guy needs to be moved, made a little bit longer. I'm going to grab the edge, and I'm going to uh, move it. I'm going to go a little bit beyond, that's fine. Okay. okay, good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another keyframe. Now I could just grab this guy and move it to where I want, or I can also create a keyframe by clicking here. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna hover over top of the x-axis. I'm gonna just move this guy here. And I might make it move up a little bit too. Um, you know, maybe, well, my eye line is a little bit there. Okay, we'll do that. And I'm going to make it go off frame. There. That is my new keyframe. Okay, it's off the screen. So now it does everything in between. By the way, this is called tweening in animation. All right, look at that. That is your keyframe back and forth. 
So, um, if you want to see it down here in the timeline, you, ha you can expand this guy right here. And then see the little FX. If you control click on it, you can pick the different keyframes that you might want to see. You're used to seeing opacity, aren't you? But you can pick anything that you'd like. So there's positioning. Okay. And now one of the things that actually isn't so good is that it often needs to be updated. And it kind of ticks me off because you'll notice that the dots aren't there. And it's the same thing with opacity, right? So the opacity, it, uh, you need to sometimes tell it twice. So I'm not a big fan of doing the keyframing down here because uh, it, it isn't showing. It should have the little dots. Okay. But anyway, the key, this keyframing works extremely well across the side there. All right. So now. We need to add in some sound. So let's put the playhead right at the beginning. I'm going to hit the up arrow. And we're going to grab some sound. Now you can get sound from my website by going to uh, down to special effects files. And you can go down to sound. And there's a whole bunch of different sounds here. If you don't like them. You can, um, you can ask me and I'll download some other ones if you'd like. I got race cars and road runners and that kind of thing. I'm going to actually throw in a, a B sound right at the moment. And so I already downloaded these as a matter of fact. I'm going to grab them and just toss them from the downloads folder into my media folder. Don't forget to do that because the downloads folder gets deleted lots of times. So you definitely want your project files inside this guy, right? Inside your media folder. Okay, I'm going to go back to Premiere Pro. If I double click in this area over here, it opens this up. I can grab the bees. I'm also going to grab the race car and Roadrunner, import them in. Awesome. Double click on the B sound, and now I'm going to click just on the audio right there. So I can see, there it is. I'm going to grab, I'm going to make this my in point. I'm going to go over to here, make that my out point. Then I'm just going to drag the audio. That's this guy here, and I'm going to pull it down and put it down below. Make this a little smaller there. And maybe I'm going to actually go a little further. And the reason why is because I actually want the buzz to start off screen. So I'm going to make, I hit P for my pen tool. I made a little keyframe right here. Oh, by the way, yeah, just in case. Uh, so I got that guy by, by dragging this. I hovered over top of this fellow. See how the mouse changes? Pulled it down. And then now you can hopefully see, you know, we got to go a little further and I get that white line. There it is. Okay, I use the pen tool to make this keyframe. I'm going to click again and pull this guy down there. So now the buzz fades in. <laughs> Alright, so that's where I want it to start fading down. There, so I just faded it down. Maybe a little bit more, hey? I'll start doing that. Awesome. I'm going to hit the letter C so I get my razor blade cut tool, and I'm going to slice it right there. V for my move tool again, and I click on it and hit delete. There. Okay. And now we have motion keyframe cross very easy okay all right here is a, another one uh, actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to have you uh make that and uh then i'm going to have another video which is going to show you rotation